Hi, uh, my topic today, who am AI, is a pun on a very important question. What is the identity of an intelligent machine? I identify as a male, a father, an Indian, and 100% Puerto Rican lover. But I'm also an intelligent machine, aren't I? A machine with emotions, conscious, a machine that can adopt evolve with all the flaws that come with it. About a decade ago, I was working on an AI model, trying to predict the devices in a network based on their fingerprints. In short, we were trying to figure out if the device that you're using in your home behind the internet is a phone or a computer. Now, this was crucial because armed with this information, we could optimize the network and give users a better internet experience with much better quality. On the contrary, if our predictions were wrong, the experience would be ruined. So no pressure. We spent months, we were very excited, and we perfected the AI. We launched it in the North American market, and uh, we saw amazing results in the field. Everything was going well. The AI had mastered the art. It was doing what humans could not do at the speed and scale that humans could not perform. Yet, when we tested the model in India, we saw many issues. Our accuracy was bad. It completely confused my team and I. Ideally, the Indian demography should not have shown a different result because we use similar networks and devices. But what we found eventually is the biggest conundrum that AI is facing today. We found that there was a skew in the ratio of phones to computers in the West versus India. Say, uh, for about 100 phones in, uh, in America, we would see about 20 computers. The number was very low in India. For about 100 phones, we saw less than one computer. This Q trick the self-learning algorithm. Now, this could be a technical detail. But what we really missed was the socioeconomic difference between these two economies. The fact that most Indians did not have access to a computer or seen a computer before they experienced internet was completely lost on us. And this was disturbing because we, Indians, sitting in India, with no malice towards anybody, completely forgot about a huge section of our own population just because it did not fit into our definition of the idle world. Sadly, this is true with many technology companies. When Apple launched Face ID in China, they had to refund their buyers because the AI was not able to distinguish between Chinese faces well. It's a typical stereotype for any race. The, the most well-known example was of a, of a mother whose phone was unlocked by her young male child. So the AI was not able to distinguish across age, gender, and race. And imagine the horror of Google engineers when the early versions of Photos app was labeling some African-Americans as gorillas. So is it the AI that was racist, classist, or a bigot? Or was it the humans behind it who were to blame? All of these problems were swiftly fixed when they were found. But that's like a, you know, whack-a-mole. It brought about an underlying paradox. AI is an amalgamation of human-generated data. The machines would look at the world with our lenses. And we have to agree, those lenses are very biased. So, how do we fix this? The machines do not get biases, they're not directly fed into the machines. It happens due to prejudiced data or due to bad design. I'll give an example. Uh, in computer science, there's a data structure called Boolean 
When I started learning programming, I was taught about Boolean data structure. It can store zero or one, true or false, two things, essentially one state because zero is lack of one, nothing else. And every book that I saw had one standard example of how to use Boolean, that is gender, male, female, zero, one, simple. You save one eighth of space if you use Boolean instead of a character. Now imagine if a machine learning model is built with Boolean as its base, then it's going to have a hard time understanding non-binary genders. So to fix this, we have to start from fairness. Fairness at all levels. Fairness in the data sets that we use and fairness in the design. We have to make sure that we take care of all the identity characteristics. Uh, I'll take a pause here. So when I started, I said that, you know, I'm a machine with a with lot of flaws and I identify as that. And the example of one of the flaws is I forgot to move to the next slide. So here we go. Uh, coming back to the identity characteristics. Now it's very, it's easy to say, I just said that, right? But it's very hard to implement because we don't know what we don't know. Companies like Facebook, Meta, Alphabet, and a lot of researchers around the world, they have built frameworks and tools to help us guide through this path. And we should be using those. But this is not enough. There's much more that we need to do. We need to do adversarial testing of our AI models. That is something that has come up very recently. The adversarial testing has to be done for implicit prompts and explicit prompts. For example, ChatGPT handles explicit prompts very well. It will refuse to spread gender stereotypes. However, it can still succumb to implicit prompts. You can trick the ChatGPT into writing code that will tell you that only a white male can be a good engineer. So you need to build frameworks around that and safeguard what we find from these testings. Most of the advanced ML algorithms or AI is built on a concept of neural networks, which in a sense mimics how our brain processes and stores the information. Original perceptron algorithm was invented somewhere in 1940s in a US Navy lab, shown to the world in 1950s, but it is now when the true power of that algorithm is showing up. What we are doing is we are basically replacing uh, the carbon-based neuron with a silicon-powered mathematical operation. And for the mathematicians in the room, they would know it's a complex but a well-known uh, operation of matrix multiplication. But what does this do? Because the way I, these AI algorithms work, there is no easy way for us to explain what an AI is doing. We don't know why or how an AI has made a decision. Yes, we can train it. Yes, we can test it. But because we do not know how and why it is performing, uh, there's this lack of trust in AI. Research has shown that we can make explainable and transparent AI algorithms. It's expensive, takes more time. Research is still ongoing, but we can do that. And what we need to ensure is that these tools and frameworks are available to everyone as and when they are built and people spend resources to use them. At the end of the day, human identity will dictate the AI identity. An intelligent machine does not have its own consciousness, but it will mimic the consciousness of the human race. As we humans adopt and evolve, so will be the AI. With this, I would like to leave you all with one thought. As humans rely more and more on the AI, that means the AI is becoming more and more intelligent, what will happen to the AI when humans stop generating new data? If we stop generating unique data, what happens to the AI? Will we all live in an AI-generated eco-chamber? Or humanity will witness 
another renaissance moment. Thank you very much.